we are dead, but we are we are dead in the flesh, but we're alive in the spirit. So when we when we come to understand God's grace, what we're what we're finding out, we're finding out who we are in Christ and how God sees us. And so that helps us to live the Christian life. In other words, we can't live the Christian life apart from Christ. And, and I say that lightly to the fact that because it's like, okay, it's Christ in the Christian life. No, 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 it's not. That's, that's not what it is. It's not Christ and we live a Christian life. And, and sometimes we look at that, okay, I got born again, now I got to live this Christian life. And the Christian life comes with A, B, C, and D and all that. No, he is the life. And his life is living in us. But true enough, we have to renew our mind. He's renewing our mind according to what he has done. Because this is bringing us into relationship. And what keeps us out of relationship is sin. And what I'm saying is on our conscience. But the, uh, I, I do it like this here. Uh, say you have a, a son. You have a son. And uh, he ain't, he haven't, you would say you were locked up for 10 years, 20 years, whatever. And he don't know you. And you, you, you get out and you go to the house. He, he, I mean, you know, he's not gonna come running to you because he doesn't know you, especially if he, he got older. You know, I'm, I'm 14 years old now. I, I don't know what you do, you know. But it takes time. So now he has he has to show himself what friendly. <clears throat> he has to show himself friendly to him. He has to show himself, he has to show himself that he loves him and that he's his father. He can't go in demanding anything. You gotta go you gotta go in there with compassion but his, but his purpose is is to win his son to let him know that I'm, that I'm your father I love you always so, so what God has done through Christ he's taken down every barrier everything that would cause us to even think dream vision or whatever that God no longer loves us or does God really love me or does God really accept me so through, through the word of God, he's constantly uh, confirming to us, giving us the assurance that what this grace is, it has allowed us to stand before God without fault or accusation, without fear, without trembling, to know that I've been loved by him and to know that I'm his child, to know that, I'm, that, that I know where I'm going, from start to finish, and nothing can take this away from me. Nothing can change this. Now, because first, a re, a, in other words, back, back to the, the man and his son again. He gets out, okay? Say, say his wife is waiting on him, he gets out. And now his son is 13 years old. And so his son is in the bed when he gets up. The son don't get up to about 9, 10 o'clock. Oh no, you can't do that in my house. You gotta get up. So now the father won't start throwing down rules. Now I don't even know you. What is this? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, I've been, I, I don't get up to 8, 9, 30. You only get up at 6 o'clock? So, so you, you, see, you see what's going to happen right there. And it's because there's no relationship. He wants to throw down some rules. And if he think obeying his rules, he think get that respect, okay, you love me. I, rem I remember this young man, um, he was he was telling us that his kids, his kids and his stepkids, oh, they love me. They they they, they just love me. They, they they really they crazy about me, you know. Cause I love them, you know. He walked out the room, and his wife looked at us, and she said they are terrified of him. She said they're scared of him. That's why they do what he said. Oh, I just like. Because to him, when I'm telling you to do this, 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 that, that, and you obey me, okay, we're good. You, you, you like me, because you, you know you're doing what I'm saying. But sad to say, that's how we treat God. Or oh, that's how we've been, that's how God's treating us. Of course, there is a place of how God's instructing us. Uh, in us to live a Christian life. I keep saying Christian. <laughs> to live this life because, in other words, 
I mean you trying to live a life that glorifies God. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if the Spirit of God was in you, I mean you to live a life that glorifies God. I mean you to help you to live a life that glorifies God. But number one, know this. I'm in you now. You belong to the Father. You're a child of the living God. That doesn't change. Nothing changed that I'm in you. I'm not leaving you. Or I'm never forsaking you. I'm in you. But I'm in you to help you live a life that glorifies the Father. But why I'm in you through the renewing of your mind, through the, by the Spirit of God, we be, we're being healed, we're being transformed into the likeness of Christ through the Word, by, by the Spirit, and all these things are taking place in our inner man. And so he's not in there to judge us whether, okay, uh, 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 you're going to hell or not, or whether you're not going to make it. No, no, I'm in here that you may glorify the Father. And it's not according to the law. It's according to what, the way he is moving you this day. And to glorify God, it might be walking over here and saying, hey, brother, let me give you one of these books. Thank you, brother. Oh, let me go over here and do it. Sometimes we, we, we got to go over here and say, we got to read a scripture, we got we to gotta quote this, we got to do this. No. Loving glorifies the Father. When I'm loving you, guess who I'm glorifying? Because glorified means this. I'm making him known. Yeah. I'm making him, by what I do, he is being made known. And I don't have to say, you know, in other words, okay, let me go over here and see him. No. No, 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 no. It's, it's not something you're trying to practice. Come on. Because your relationship is going to come from the heart. Come on. Because people will say something to you, and you, you know, like, what? Look, thank you so much. Uh, and you're like, are you a Christian? You ain't thinking about that. You're just helping where there's, where, where there's a place of a need. Come on. And he'll open up your heart to, me, to meet that need. Because I've been dealing with you over here in your secret place for how long? So when you come out, overflow. Overflow gonna happen. I used to look at you, but now I'm looking at you. Man, <laughs> man how you doing, man? You see what I'm saying? And sometimes it's not even you, it's me. Jesus came full of grace and truth. Everything that was in him, everything that God gave him to accomplish was concerning that we might become the children of God. That we might believe and come to children and become the children of God. All that the grace that he, he came in, that we might receive after his resurrection. He went to the cross, we know that, and he was buried, and he was resurrected, that we would receive the grace of God. And what we find out, the grace of, the grace of God that he poured out was his life. Because when Moses came, Moses, well, the law was given to Moses, right? But, but, thank God, grace and truth came to Jesus Christ. Because what the law was demanding, God satisfied with his grace. He did something, we, he, did, he did what the law could never do. Jesus did what the law could never do, justify us and make us right with God. So this is the grace that came to do what the law could never do, to justify us and make us right with God. Now he did that, that we, that we might believe that he is the one whom God has sent who loved us and sent his son, his grace towards us, that we might believe in the, that he sent him, that he died and he was buried and he was resurrected, that we might believe. And when we get to the cross, when we go back to the cross and the things that we talked about from the reconciliation and the forgiveness and all those things we talked about, all that was provided at the cross so that we would receive it today in our ear the spirit will minister to our ears about this grace how God has drawn near to us and how we are able to draw near to him and he like I say he's moved every obstacle that would cause us everything we come up with well I, I well you know you know this this that or you know and, you know uh, uh, this, this you know and even in our pain 
you know, we, we, we feel rejected, we feel like, no, I can't, God won't accept me. All these different things, issues we have, it is the grace of God that breaks through that. And, and, and it might be coming from your lips one day. Coming from your lips, from, from, from your heart, from your lips one day. Or even, or even in your actions one day. Because you have grabbed a hold of this, not in word, alone. But your life has been changed. Your heart has been changed. Because you, 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 you've been, uh, your heart has been grounded in this truth and is bearing a fruit of your relationship with God. Not Christianity. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, 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 you know you better than anybody. And you know what happens in the secret place when you were God. You know the things that God is ministering to that. Uh, but why would Moses be the accuser? Raise your hand. Why would Moses be the accuser? Because he'd be the one to tell him. He's like, I, I've been telling you about him the whole time. That's why everything was meant for okay, him. Okay, that's good, that's good. But it also kind of be like, um, I, I think I might have, I think I might be misunderstanding because I was thinking something along why the lines Moses of... Why is Moses the accuser? Something along the lines of like, he would be like, this is what I told you to do, this and this, this way, okay. this and that. Why would the accuser? Because in the Old Testament, uh, there was a prophecy that came that God would have a prophet in the future will come and you have to believe everything he says is greater than I am. Okay. So, anybody, anybody, you know, anybody, why would the accuser? Because uh, he's saying that what you put your trust in is what will accuse you. That which you stand by is what you're judged by. Okay. Anybody else? Why would the accuser? Okay. I got, I got, I got, I got, huh? He's the law. Because he got the law. <laughs> That's why he's the accuser. And, you know, I mean, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, I'm hearing Jesus say this. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, you coming at me? You, you, you know, you elevating Moses up higher than me. You, you know, you got your chest all out about Moses. You know, I can, I can just sit. You know, I'm just saying, wait. Sometimes you need to be silent. Just wait. Don't say nothing. Just be silent. Wait. Let, 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 let the accuser, let, 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 let him keep talking. Because he don't know what he's talking about. And when he get to, Jesus says, so, uh, wait a minute. Moses is your accuser. He was given the law to accuse you about what? The truth. Um, what, did, what did the law accuse, uh, accuse man about? Uh, him not, not being able to follow it. Sin. Accuser of sin. Moses is your accuser. Not me. He was given the law to show you your sin. He accused you all day long. And you want to throw rocks at me? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If you believe Moses. No, so Jesus has made the Father known. Now this is the foundation for life. Jesus has made the Father, Father known to us. Now, so, so uh, accepting that, receiving that, Jesus has made the Father known. He didn't come to his own home. He didn't come to start a religion. Matter of fact, the church is his body. Amen? The church is his body. His spirit lives in the church. It's not a building. It's not an organization. It's an organism. So, so, uh, and he came to reveal the Father to us. As a matter of fact, you search the scripture out. Uh, the Father is showing his love to the world, right? By engrafting the Gentiles. Which was also prophesied, you know, by the prophets and so on. So where, where God, you know, the Jews thought it was just them. But no, no, it was, a, it was, it was you from the, from the start. God showed you, you know, for, for his plan. But he came to show us the Father. And he is not showing us the Father in sin. It's his love. Moses showed you the Father in your sin. He showed you God's, uh, that mountain was on fire. <laughs> it was fire on the mountain top. You know, he came to show you the Father through the law and judgment, condemnation. He revealed the Father through, through, through the condemnation of your sin. That's how the Father was revealed. Uh, well, I won't say the Father. I will say God. That's how God was revealed to them. 
But Jesus came to reveal the Father. Moses revealed God. Jesus revealed the Father. Why, why, why is that different? Why is that different? Moses was a servant. Jesus is a son. So the son comes to reveal the Father. Amen. Moses was a servant of the house. Jesus is the son of the house. So he reveals the Father. So that's why he comes to live in us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Father, we give you thanks again.